Daily Broadside Day 622. This is Frank. Frank, say hello, Frank. Frank's a little cold because Frank weighs like 14 ounces. So I'm keeping Frank this weekend. And I got to say something about this weird dog, right? Look at, look at him. Just, just shaking. Look, you see yourself? Uh, this dog is some kind of terrier mix. And um, this dog's got some weird uh, proclivities, right? First of all, when he gets in a bed, right under the covers, goes right underneath, and he burrows down to the end. of. I don't know how the dude stays like conscious, you know what I mean? Because you can't breathe under blankets like that. He just sleeps under there. It's weird. I mean, I understand that they're little, you know, tunneling rat dogs and whatnot, but true to the word, that's how they sleep and all. And I'll tell you another thing about this little weirdo, this little weird bastard. Frank, pay attention. Frank, eyes front. You didn't listen for crap. Uh, and that's part of the problem is Frank eats at 5 a.m. and 1 p.m., and in between that time, Frank begs for food the entire time he's awake. If there's any, uh, I, if there's even an inkling of you going near the refrigerator or anything, he's right on your heels, you know, in hopes of getting something, even though he doesn't ever get anything. Because I'm told that normal food messes up his digestive tract. And one of the things that I don't allow is messed up digestive tracts in my house. So we feed him nothing but kibble uh, because that's all he eats. And when I say he eats, 5 a.m., 1 p.m., and it's like a quarter cup of food. And he's done with it in about 32 seconds. I mean, it's like the bull's out of the gate and, oh, he's ripped that steer. You know I mean? It's done, right? And then he just has to wait for like another seven hours to eat again. And then at 1, he doesn't eat again until 5 o'clock the next morning. I don't know who came up with this schedule, but it's the dumbest thing ever. And I feel kind of bad for him, you know. Um, but, again, I'm not uh, risk. Frank, you know, I was letting go, but, uh, I'm not risking that, um, uh, him putting Frank all over my house. You know what I'm saying? If you're picking up what I'm putting down, but interesting dog, I'm telling you. Uh, but so I'm keeping, I'm keeping Frank this week and, uh, <clears throat> because his, uh, the family that owns him is in Iceland. Reykjavik, um, I guess it's pronounced. Um, so, uh, Frank is hanging out with me and, um, between the burrowing and the tunneling and the eating and begging, he's just never been told no, I don't believe. Because you tell him, like, what are you looking at, Frank? You tell him something, he don't listen. He don't listen for crap. Now, he will come to you if you, you know, if he goes off too far, you know, I'll let him out. I'll be like, Frank, come here. And he'll turn around and come back. But if you tell him to get out of your face while you're eating a bowl of pasta, let's say, he doesn't do that. Uh, he doesn't listen for crap in that sense. Um, so obviously whatever. And I'm gonna tell you what, the dude's got an internal clock like you've never seen, right? Um, I don't wear a watch and, um, I, you know, you get, I haven't worn a watch in like 20 years. And because of that, you kind of get in tune with the world and you know, like what time it kind of is. I'm usually within like 10 or 15 minutes of it. Um, you know, just, just gotta, you get like a feel for it. Well, this dude, dude's got like just a, a built in clock because I'm gonna tell you what, at 5 a.m., he is standing on your chest, standing on your head. He comes out of his little tunnel, his little burrow, and uh, he's standing on your face uh, letting you know that it's 5 a.m. and it's time to eat. And I want to be like, just go back to bed for like three hours, you know? And then you can eat at 8, and then we can push 1 o'clock to like 6 o'clock, and it's a little bit more normal, and you're not starving from that quarter cup of food you ate. But I digress. It's just weird how... On time, that dude knows uh, what time it is. It's, it's very odd. Last night, I went to a comedy club, as I might have mentioned yesterday. And I'm going to tell you what. When I say comedy club, this was like this was like a 20-foot room, 20-foot wide room, no stage. Everything was the same floor. And you're sitting in chairs that were like out of a Pizza Hut from 1987. I mean, my ass was numb. I was only there for like an hour and a half. And it was just like, oh, these seats are horrible, you know? It's like a seat you would find in like a pizzeria in Jersey or something, you know? And uh, so we're sitting there and watching, and it's just basically like open mic. Everybody gets five minutes, and it was just so bad. I didn't I didn't smirk. I didn't smile, and I damn sure didn't laugh. And some people had some uh, okay cadence and a good rhythm, and they didn't have a problem talking, but the material was... The material was a little suspect. It just wasn't funny. And I'm sitting around these people, and there's probably like 40 people in this room. That's it, right? It's $5 to get in. Um, and uh, 
I'm sitting, this girl next to me is laughing like laughing like it's the funniest thing she's ever heard everything every every like 12 seconds and i'm and i looked at her a couple times and i'm like you know i just i don't understand and it's it's not the alcohol because i mean we had i mean they just opened the place there wasn't enough time to get drunk enough to be that happy i just i don't get it i, I guess people have a i guess there's people that just have maybe i have a snobbish sense of humor you know the things that make me laugh you know I like a, a Louis C.K., a Bill Burr, a David Tell, a Daniel Tosh, you know, that, that kind of stuff. It makes me laugh. It makes me audibly, uh, joyfully laugh. But these dudes, last night, I'm just like, it's more like, God, I just feel bad that you're even up there, you know? This one dude was like, God, he had to be 6'4", 350 pounds, and he started off by sitting down on a stool, real limping up there at the stage, and started by talking about how he had gout. And I'm like, was this a joke? It wasn't. He was just telling us he had gout. And it was really awkward because it was like the first 45 seconds. That's all he said. And we're all like, all right. And this girl next to me is like laughing. I, I just, I don't get it. Nevertheless, I appreciate the fact that these people, uh, you know, get up there. I dabble in a little stand up, So I, I completely understand. Um, it's not easy getting up in front of people. Some people are built to talk in front of other people. Some people have a, a grave fear of it and want nothing more of it. I love talking in front of people. I will talk in front of anybody. I could care less who the audience is. It intimidates me, not one iota. But these people, the problem is it's you got to get some material. Because if you don't have material, no amount of talking and rhythm and cadence, all that can make it work out for you. So uh, for me and Frank, <laughs> see, it's right on cue. Just looks at me, you know. He's got like this white, like look at look at like the white like eyeliner fur around his eyes. It's kind of weird, but uh, for me and Frank, um, y'all have a great what's left of your Sunday, and uh, currently Duke's up by like twenty something at the half. Let me get him.